Hello and welcome to another fantasy football tournament series, uh, number 60. And this is, I'm not sure what to call this, but it is a sequel to the most previous fo fantasy football tournament, which was um, the Elite Eight National Domestic Leagues in Europe. And it, uh, it was a club tournament specifically. And I took the current club champions of each of these countries you see here from their league and did a tournament uh, for them. Now, this one is all national teams. So you see the actual national teams of those domestic leagues. And I want to make this very clear. Um, the eight countries you see here, I'm, I'm not saying that these eight teams are the best eight yeah, I'm not saying that these are the eight best national teams currently in Europe. Uh, I'm just, I'm just taking the countries from the the previous video. Um, yeah, the countries from the previous video and making a vid on them. So, um, to be honest, though, most of the countries flags you see here, I think most of them are among the best eight national teams. Um, with the exception of two that I will not mention, but I'll leave that for you to decide. Um, so you say England, Italy, Russia, Portugal, France, Spain, Ukraine, and Germany. I don't think it's a coincidence that many of the best national teams in Europe also have some of the best leagues in Europe. You usually see uh, uh, the two are synonymous with each other. Not always, but for the most part, yes. Uh, I don't think two of the teams here are in the best eight, but again, that's not the nat that's not the nature of this tournament. So this is what we have. We have two groups of four. Uh, I did pick a host nation this time, and it's a single round robin format instead of the double one that I had with the clubs, as as is done in the Champions League. This is just basically a Confederations Cup style tournament. Uh, two groups of four, and two teams from each group go through. And yeah, you can figure it out from there. So the host nation I picked here uh, is England. So let's go through the groups. So group A is England, Italy, Russia, and Portugal. And group B is France, Spain, Ukraine, and Germany. So let's jump right in. Okay, so uh, the first match, England versus Italy, have gone with with a one zero victory for England, and Russia versus Portugal have gone with a one one draw. Then we have England versus Russia, and and Portugal versus Italy have gone with a hmm a two one victory for England, and then. A 0-0 draw between Portugal and Italy. And then Italy versus Russia. Um, I don't think the Italian national team are out of the woods just yet, just because they avoided relegation uh, in Ligue A against a poor Polish team. Um, you know, they're still going through the, the thick of things trying to Rebuild after not making it to the World Cup. For sure, there's a lot of quality on the Italian national team. I just don't know if they've really fully, fully recuperated from uh, the, the the devastation of a year ago and what they're doing in the last twelve or thirteen months in trying to return to the pinnacle of European football, world football, for that matter. Um, and I don't think that it would be at all at all radical to pick Russia to win this match considering in stark contrast where Russia currently is uh, as a national team. And so I'm going to go with a um, I'm gonna go with a 2 to 1 victory here for Russia. And, and then Portugal versus England, I'm going with a draw and it's a high scoring 3-3 three, three draw. So I have England winning the group, the host nation on top with seven points. 
Russia coming in second on four points because I have Portugal pulling a Euro 2016 and tying. Uh, so yeah, Portugal with three draws. Just as they did in Euro 2016. Italy with one point. So England seven, Russia four, Portugal three, Italy one. Reasonably close. I don't think that is at all uh, unreasonable. I mean, we have to consider things here. I know that a lot of the time some people don't like when I pick the big teams to go through in these tournaments, but we're seeing a narrative shift in international football in recent years. And I think that, and I think that you know, Russia being a World Cup quarter finalist, I think what they've done in the Nations League, proving that what they what they did was not just a matter of uh, home field advantage. They're very much so on the up. Uh, so, if you have any disagreements, that's okay. But I'm not going to pick the big teams just because. I'm not going to pick the big teams just because their names are flashier. It's it's not happening. I refuse. So in Group B, we would have France versus Spain. Uh, I've gone with a... Uh, let me see here. I'm going with a 2-1 to one victory for France. No, I'm going to say 1-0 to France. And then Ukraine versus Germany. Um, I'm going with a 1-0 victory for Ukraine. Yeah, I'm going with Ukraine here. Then we have Germany versus Spain. Uh, I've gone with a 3 to one victory for France over Ukraine, and I've gone with a um, a two-two draw between Germany and Spain. You know what? I apologize. I, sh I should. I, I meant to go three to two uh, for Spain over Germany. That's what I meant to say. I'm sorry. And then Spain versus Ukraine. I've gone with a two-zero victory for Spain over the Ukraine. And Germany versus France. I don't want to give Germany no points. I mean, I mean, it sounds kind of crazy. In, in hindsight, I never thought, you know, six months ago, that Germany would be in the in the position they're in now. But that's just that's football for you. Um, Germany played France relatively close in their two meetings in the UEFA Nations League. Um, I felt they should have beaten France in the first game in September. And then they got a little bit unlucky in Paris when they had the come from behind loss. But I'm going to go with a 1-1 a draw here. So got, I got France winning the group. Yeah, I've got Ukraine on three points. They're not going to come in last. It's going to be Germany that comes in last with one point. So seven Six, three, one, Ukraine and Germany out. So let's move on to the semifinals. Between England and Spain, I've gone with a 0 0 draw and England to emerge victorious, yes, I know, on penalties. England to win on penalties, scoring every single one, 5 to 4 on penalties after a 0 0 draw. The host nation goes to the final. And then France versus Russia. I've gone with a 2-0 victory for France. 2-0 game. The third place game would have Spain versus Russia. Uh, a rematch of the World Cup meeting they had. This time, I have Spain winning. Over Russia, 1-0. So Russia finishing in fourth. Again, these are national teams. Spain in third. And the final... And the final... 
Uh, England, the host nation, versus France, the current world champions. I've gone with a... Hmm. I'm going the French victory. But I'm trying to decide the score. You know what? I say France wins this match uh, 3 1 over England. So England would come in second. I think England is England is uh doing themselves proud lately under Gareth Southgate, but you gotta I have to give it to the host, I have to give it to the the world champions here. So France wins this tournament. England second, Spain third, Russia in fourth. Leave a comment below, like, subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you in the coming days, God willing. Until then, guys, take care. Have a good night. Much love and peace out.